Okay, uh, hey everybody. Um, before I get on to what I'm going to show you here in this video, which is what you can see in front of you at the moment, uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody who has subscribed to my channel. Um, you know, when I started this, I never really expected anybody to, uh, to, to, to subscribe too much, to be honest. Uh, so to reach a milestone of a thousand subscribers is, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite grateful of that. So thanks everybody for, um, for who has subscribed and I appreciate it. And anybody who may be watching this, if you do subscribe, that would be great too. Um, so in this video, what I'm going to do is show you this little device which is called Flurk, and it's like an intelligent uh, infrared receiver. Um, so as it says on the uh, the packaging there, control your computer with any remote. And it's a little USB device, which you can see here. And there's pretty much nothing to the packaging. It's like that, you know, visit our website for helpful tips, community support, and free software, www.flurk.tv. And, and that's it, really. So if I separate these two bits of plastic, I get the piece of cardboard, and here's the actual flurk itself. So as you can see, it's a piece of clear plastic with a circuit board inside, and you can see on the left-hand side there uh, the two uh, infrared receivers as well that are attached to the circuit board. Standard USB plug on it, obviously, rather than mini USB or anything. Uh, and we can see it says flurk on the back of the uh, of the device itself. So. Yeah, this is designed really for the likes of um, uh, media servers, HTPCs, that kind of stuff. So you, if you want to be able to uh, control whatever you might be using, like uh, Windows Media Center or Plex or XBMC or whatever else, any any of those kind of derivatives, um, it should work with this. And the idea is any remote control you have in the house can be used to control that, you know, your, 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 your media center. Um, so anybody who has subscribed to my channel will know that I'm kind of a big advocate of XBMC. Uh, I've got a little nook here beside me, um, which we can see here, and I'm going to turn this on. And this is running the OpenELEC version of XBMC, so you can see it's booting up now. Quickly, it's quite fast on this, I missed the Intel logo there, but yeah, okay, OpenELEC is coming up. XBMC, and obviously I'm using a <coughs> Samsung TV. And I want to be able to use the Samsung TV remote to control the TV and the Nook at the same time. So at the moment, as you can see, uh, I have opened this already. I'll tell you what I've done to it already, but I haven't programmed anything to it. So if I plug this in, uh, if I use the remote control and go to the arrow buttons, nothing happens. So I can adjust the volume, which is fine. You can see that on the screen but actually none of the controls do anything at the moment, so as you can see. So what we're going to do is uh, take this out. I'm going to uh, run through a brief um, kind of setup of the uh, device. Let me just uh, log into my PC here. So when you go onto Flurk's website and download a piece of software, it will look like this. Let me try and get the glare off that a little bit. There we go. So it looks like uh, yeah, looks like this. Now, when you um, when you download the software, it's at version one at the moment, and similarly the firmware on this is version one. And like I just said, I have done something to this. Uh, when you register for free on their forums, um, you can get an updated beta version of the uh, the firmware. And in this instance, I'm running RC2. You can see at the top, and the firmware version of the of the um, the little uh, Flirt device is now on version two five five dot one. Just in case uh, any of you wanted to know. So, so first thing, um, my remote control. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, you can see there's different type of profiles on here. So if I go into controllers on the top, you can see it says minimalist, full keyboard, boxy, XBMC, Windows Media. Um, there is also a profile going around, I believe, for Logitech Harmony remotes as well. Um, so if I switch to XBMC, for instance, there to kind of standard keyboard uh, keys that you would use on XBMC, uh, what you might use for instance. Um, but let's go with minimalist first of all and say alright I want to use the up arrow key so you see if I press it it says okay well which button do you want it to be associated with and I'm going to say this button and when I press it okay recorded successfully so let's do down Oops, press the down button, there you go, the left button, 
record and that one. The enter button we'll do as the center and the back button which we'll use as that one. Okay, and that's it. I'm done. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, I don't need to do that. Um, okay, so that's now programmed, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that for a second. I plug it now into my Nook. And if I now use the arrow keys, you can see it's now changing, which is quite nice. So I can select whichever I want to watch, and I can change the volume. Uh, and I can go into videos, and I can go to files, and I've got some demos of some files here, or I can hit the return button to get back out again, which takes me back to the main screen. Um, I can go back in, and I can say, well, I want to watch a Dolby video, and there you go, it'll start, and I can adjust the volume of the TV still whilst that is playing, and that's it. But of course, if I press the only buttons I've assigned so far are the back button, the up, down, left, right, and the enter button. So that's really not very good because at the bottom here I've got things like stop and play and pause and everything. So let's take this back out again. Plug it back in again. Now I'm going to go to um, we'll go to the XPMC profile first. So okay, so we've got home and we have got. Uh, go back so I'm going to reselect these so let's change that in fact actually uh, stop that if I go back to the minimalist and if I erase that one uh, actually no there is back erase um, do I go Okay, let's try that. We'll see. Uh, so if I go back into XPMC and I say I want the go back button to be uh, this one. Button already exists. Ah, this is what I meant before. Go back. Uh, so, oh yeah, okay. So I, I click erase and then I click the button that I want to remove from the remote control. So that button is now removed. That's fine. I go back to XPMC. So. I want to do it this way around for me, so that one is now there, so I can say the home button will be the exit button on here. And we've got play, pause, so let's just do them as well, so play would be that one, pause would be that one. I know this is very informative, but I'm just going to quickly run through this. So you get the gist of I can give you a quick demonstration and, and really this is showing you how easy this actually is. Uh, now interestingly there's um, other alt options as well that you've got. So you can do volume, you can do your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, everything. They're quite easy to do. You've also got power um, for shutdown. So what I'll do in this instance is I'll do the shutdown and I will pair it to the D button, which is very rarely used, the blue button here on these... On these uh, um, controllers and the reason I'll do that one is I'll show you in a second and also I also know that there are other keys in XBMC that do certain things so for instance um, I and O and M and C um, so I is for information for when you're watching a film um, you might want to see some more information on the film or whatever so I'm going to select the red button for that one and apparently that one already exists. I don't remember hitting that, but let's erase that button for a second. Okay. Okay, so I paired with that one. That's it. And let's go. Uh, o will pair with this one. And M will pair with that one. And also, one that people tend to forget is the C button, the context menu in XPMC as well. Um, so I'm going to select the C menu to be both of these, that one here and also that one, just for the sake of it. So both those two. And that same button already exists again. Okay, well I will erase that button there then and do it again. Okay, so it recorded successfully. And yeah, we're done. Okay. So let me unplug this again. And plug it back in. Uh, so Again, we can see our we're moving around. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video again. Uh, files. Give you that file again. Now I should be able to pause it and stop it from here. So there you go. There you go. Hit the pause button. You will get uh, it on your TV. You might recognise the the key, for instance, and say, "Well, in this particular channel, it doesn't do anything." So it might say "not available," like it just did there. Um, but obviously, XBM it disappears after a second or so. Um, but yeah, I can obviously control the Nook now um, using those, and I can now stop the video as well, which is handy. Um, you get the different return and home buttons now. Do something. So if I exit, it should go straight back to the main screen, which it just did. But if I was, um, if I went back in there, for instance, uh, if I press return, it should take me just back up a level now, rather than like that, rather than exiting back to the whole the home screen. Now, similarly. Uh, the shutdown option. So, uh, if I go into shutdown and I put it into suspend mode, and the reason I selected the blue key on this is because it doesn't really get used too much. Now, the red button does a lot of things here in the UK. Um, so, obviously, if you're watching TV and you hit the red button to be able to, um, I don't know, hit some extra additional channel information, um, what this would do is would turn the nook back on. But I've selected the D button as the power button. Um, so, if I press D now should happen is it will send a signal to the nook and power it back up again so I can control it still without interfering with any other TV channels that I might be watching at the time and of course I can still use my volume up and down as well um, so yeah for me I think this is an absolutely brilliant little device um, that's it it's quite quite small fits in there quite nicely any HTPC anything you've got like that would be uh, perfect really and uh, it cost me nineteen ninety nine uh, pounds, British pounds, so not the most expensive, um, especially considering that you can make use of whatever you want, really. You know, if you, you find another remote control, it's quite easy to program. You, like I say, if you've got a universal remote control like these Harmony, Logitech Harmony devices, there are uh, profiles out for, the, for this device for those um, remote controls as well. And it works a treat. Really impressed with it. So that's the, uh, the Flurk intelligent infrared uh, TV remote control so thanks very much for watching and as usual if you do like the video please rate and subscribe